In this video, we're going to discuss medium armor and the changes to medium armor. And of course, like I always say, the balance, getting risk versus reward is always key when it comes to things like PvP. Not so much when it comes to PvE, because everybody loves to be OP in PvE, but the mobs aren't going to sit there and type on the forums about this ability hits too hard or this person's too tanky or this set does too much, etc. Right? The mobs aren't going to sit there and type on the forums that we're getting killed too fast. And of course, the PvE players typically aren't going to complain about completing content too quickly. In fact, ESO has made the vast majority of their content kind of mindless, but that's a topic for another video. In this particular video, we're going to discuss about medium armor, the changes to medium armor, and of course, the way Zenimax always does, they always mess up something. So for some reason, just straight off the bat, light armor has drawbacks, heavy armor has drawbacks, but for some reason, medium armor has no drawbacks, which doesn't make sense. Because you're, you're penalizing people for wearing light armor. You're penalizing people for wearing heavy armor. But there's no penalty for medium armor. And of course, people have always been asking more for a role pro, a role play friendly feature in terms of heavy armor shouldn't be able to roll dodge. They're in super steel, etc. All that nonsense. Now, granted, forget about how that will impact PvP because these are just people who are basically LARPing. Uh, and of course, these people don't take any of that into consideration, but I do expect the developers to take that into consideration and to use the space between their ears for something a little bit more important. Now, straight off the bat, not only does it ha not have any drawbacks, I would have said, okay, if you're not going to give it any drawbacks, but then why would you give it even more benefits? Doesn't doesn't make any sense. Because as you can see with the medium armor, the benefit of wearing medium armor is increased, uh, reduces the cost of sprint reduces the cost of sneak, and for some odd reason, also reduces the cost of block. So if you're wearing five medium, you, five medium, five medium, or seven medium, you can have up to 20% block uh, cost reduction, which doesn't make sense because typically most medium armor builds have really high regen. So why would you give builds that have really high regen also block reduction? Especially because that was typically how you would whittle down their stamina on a, because they couldn't block they couldn't sit there and block for extensive periods of time because then they would stunt their region so it doesn't make any sense to do that it seems like an added benefit that shouldn't be there for a particular armor set that is designed more for being maneuverable than actually sitting there holding block and then of course it also reduces the damage from area of effects by two percent for two seconds after it says after you use roll dodge now roll dodge is already super op especially on a medium build because it literally negates all direct damage abilities and typically most aoe abilities don't deal as much damage right you can think of like for example jabs is probably one of the more so that deals damage on the on deals more damage but if you look at things like talons most aoe abilities typically deal less damage than their single target and it's for obvious reasons because they're aoe they're designed to deal damage to multiple opponents and of course they cost a little bit more and then the single target abilities obviously deal more damage to a single target and cost a little bit less because they only deal damage to one person so again it doesn't make sense to have the added benefit of when they do by nature an ability that typically reduces all damage all direct damage to zero it also subsequently reduces all of the aoe damage by a by a percent and then of course you compound the fact that you also have access to major evasion and then now you have medium armor builds basically taking very little damage when it comes to aoe and that was typically the counterplay the counterplay was to utilize aoe abilities because they could roll dodge so often so you had to rely a little bit more on abilities that did area of effect and now Zenimax is literally reducing the aoe damage that they take and of course they take no da they take very minimal damage from uh single target abilities not to mention that most builds obviously you're running medium armor you're typically running a stamina based build and so as a result stamina builds have access to of course um more more weapon damage as you can see just by nature but just by equipping it says increases your weapon damage uh, by two percent for each piece so if you're wearing seven you can have up to uh, 14 percent extra weapon damage most stamina builds typically can have much more 
um, uh, uh, weapon damage than typically most magicka builds. And stamina already hits harder. Has cheaper skills just innately. Innately, stamina builds have a 15% cost reduction to their abilities on top of the fact that if you're running medium, you gain more reduction to your abilities. And then on top of that, if you're running a 2H or do wield, and I think even... Um, not sure if bow also has a passive for for reducing the cost of the abilities and then even some classes like for example the dk um, also has access to another ability that gives them i think it's right here world and ruins decreases the cost of stamina poison abilities so for example like poison injection or if you were running uh where is it i think sigic i think the sigic one also deals um poison damage and so as a result, you have super, super, super low cost to your abilities. You typically have really high region. Most, most stand builds typically are running at least probably around 1,500, if not more, region. So you can sit there and roll dodge forever. Really doesn't make a lot of sense from a balance standpoint why ZeniMax would do this. On top of the fact you have more critical, you have access to, of course, more stamina recovery, reduced cost. Uh, you have improved sneak which is typically for like night blades you have access again to more weapon damage and then you have increased movement speed and from sprint which is typically the purpose typically these builds are a little bit more mobile so you have more more speed and of course you have cheaper roll dodge so it really doesn't make any sense from a risk reward standpoint to to give medium armor no penalties even more so to give it more more bonuses it makes absolutely no sense to do this on top of the fact that almost every stamina build there's no reason not to run evasion you gain 20 percent uh reduction to aoe so you can think of for example if someone is using like dawnbreaker uh leap talons jabs etc M many of these abilities that deal aoe damage you gain an innate 20 percent just for just for running this ability on top of the fact that you have morphs that are just ridiculous you have access for example um each piece of medium armor removes and grants immunity to snares by one second so you can have up to seven seconds which is better than having to run forward momentum and then of course you also have the opportunity to run the other morph elude which is, is when you take area damage it says you gain major expedition it says each piece of medium armor worn increases the duration so you gain a uh, major expedition for five seconds plus one second for each for each um for each piece so you could have up to 12 seconds of major expedition just by taking aoe damage and there are numerous aoe abilities in the game so so you're getting free buffs on top of damage reduction on top of web extra weapon damage and then when you compare for example unstoppable i don't, I don't think anybody's used unstoppable since like the first patch i think after like the first patch no one uses and typically the only people who are utilizing annulment are typically magic of swords for steel for shield stacking and maybe you might come across uh, a magic on night blade running out running annulment but the for, for the most part most other builds most other magic builds magic dk doesn't run annulment typically you're not going to run it on a necro you're not going to need it for a, a templar etc right typically the only person who's going to be using it is more than likely a magic of sword and maybe a magic a night blade but every stamina build there's literally no reason not to run this ability because it is literally too good on top of everything else and again this has always been xenomax's problem where they just don't know how to balance risk versus reward it is what it is what Zenimax really needs is a solid PvP combat developer to make a lot of adjustments to these things. But of course, people will always whine and cry that you're taking stuff away from me. Why are you nerfing me, bro? And this is the state of the game. This is basically the patch for stamina builds. It's been that way for quite some time, unless, of course, you're running like a Magicka, uh, a Magicka Templar. Or, I mean, a Magicka Sork, maybe a Magicka Templar. But for the most part, stamina is king. There's literally no reason not to run stam this patch because you have ridiculous amounts of bonuses on top of uh, way too much damage reduction again same old same old from zenimax online studios